to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Denise Coffrin, the Youth Services Librarian at the Hopkinton Public Library. Hello, Denise, and welcome back to the show. Hello, I'm delighted to be here. I know you weren't on too long ago talking with Mike Terosian about the expansion of the library, and that was a wonderful show. I watched that from beginning to end. And we're very end. excited about it. Yes. But this show, we want to focus in on you. We want our audience to know you and the things that you provide through the Youth Services Program at the library. So how would you, would you like to start maybe about giving us a little background on yourself and how you came to the Hopkins Okay, um, I was an English Lit major in college and after that I went on to Simmons in Boston and mm -hmm. got my Master's in Library Science. Um, I've always loved libraries ever since I was a little child going with my mother and um, it's the greatest job in the world. I, I just love it. Um, after I got out of Simmons, I worked briefly in a hospital library and then went to work in a middle school library for a few years. I retired when my children were born and I was um, not working for about eight or nine years. And then um, I started working part-time at the Southboro Library because I had been on their building study committee and I, I knew the director. And then when um, I was ready to go back to work. I just said to her, you know, if anything ever comes up, and she let me know a few months later that there was an opening, and I was lucky enough to get it. And I worked at Southboro for about eight years, and we, our director retired, and um, Kathleen Keenan, who had been at the Hopkinton Library, came and became our director, and said to me after a few months, you know, I think the children's librarian in Hopkinton is retiring. Would you be interested? because I was working part-time. And so I came over and was interviewed, and here I am, eight and a half years later. You've been there eight and a half years. So you didn't stay retired. You said you retired early. You didn't really. You just took some no, time off. Just for a few, just to stay home with my children for a few years. And then we were also overseas for five years of when my children were small with my husband's job in Europe. So um, I wasn't working at all then, but it worked out very nicely. That sounds very good. Now, uh, how do you... I know when I go over as an adult uh, to the library or I look online, I'm always discovering new things. All right, For adult services, there's mm -hmm. always so much. And I know there's a lot for youth services, too. Uh, with so many options, how do you decide what materials or programs or you know things that you're going to offer for the different ages? For materials for m most librarians, this is true anywhere, we read reviews. Um, we get several different um, periodicals, that professional periodicals with mm -hmm. reviews. I look at those. I also, the longer I, I'm here, I know my um, audience, and mm -hmm. I know that there are certain things and certain authors that the children will be clamoring for. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of series now, books for children. I mean, Harry Potter wasn't the first series, but if things exploded after Harry Potter. And the children are always looking for the next one in the series, or there's a new series coming out and what's happening. Um, for example, Rick Reardon, who wrote um, the Lightning Thief and Percy Jackson series, mm. has done what, two series, and now he's got a third one coming out this fall, so they're all waiting for that. He's going to be doing the Norse gods instead of to add on to the Greek and the Roman gods. So um, it's... There's a number of different things that we look at, but reviews are important. Um, the books that are receive awards are important. We try to keep the collection up to date for the children who are coming and doing projects. You know, if, if we have certain, we know the school's doing a certain project. If we don't have a lot, we try to um, build that part of the collection up. For example, they do explorers um, in the, I think it's fifth grade or sixth grade, and. When I first came, we didn't have a whole lot, so I've tried to build that collection up as, as much as possible so we can support the curriculum in the schools as mm -hmm. well. Um, I think that there's a lot of different um, new authors out there to discover, and it's, it's a constant learning experience. Keeps you on your toes. It certainly <laughs> does, but it's fun. 
looking for all the different materials. Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, it's been a number of years now when my son was younger, but I used to love taking him over to the library and picking out books and going mm -hmm. to the story time. And do you still offer th the story time? We do time? offer story time. Um, I do story time twice a week, and we're very lucky to have Tina Grady, who um, volunteers once a month, and she does a story time for the younger children. Mm -hmm. And I have a lady who comes in twice a year. We usually have her in the spring and the fall who does a baby sign language program for um, young mothers, which has worked out really well, and that's been really popular. So you have, do you have, you must have regular programs uh, that occur either annually or on a certain things during different seasons? We, d we do different things. Um, for example, we, the last few years we've had um, Santa Claus has come, and he loves to do stories for the children. And um, a funny story with that was a year ago, I was on jury duty, and I got picked for the jury, and we found out it was going to be like a seven or eight day trial. And I had my big Christmas program, and Santa was coming. And mm -hmm. the judge said, well, you said you had a problem. I said, well, next week, Your Honor, I have a um, big program, my, my big Christmas program. And Santa comes, and I read mm -hmm. stories, and he reads stories. And she said, what time is your program? I said, it's at 3 in the afternoon. Well, we can work around that. So I got put on the jury, but they let us out that day at 1, and I was able to get back in time for the program. I didn't know they could be so accommodating with things like that. I didn't like either, that. but she, they, they were great. But, and and um, our, when Santa comes, it's, it's, he's, he's quite awesome. And we do a, a huge um, summer program. Um, and which is going on now, has just started, and the children come in and they will sign up for a summer reading. Um, it's a national program, um, but it's d done through all the states. But um, the theme this year is Every Hero Has a Story, which is a fabulous theme because every story you read, there's a hero, and there's just so many stories to tell. Mm -hmm. um, but the children come in and we have reading logs, and they take them and um, for every hour that they read, they can fill in a little uh, chit on the um, log, and I pay them to read. I pay them in library dollars. Oh, in library dollars. And they okay. can come in after a couple of weeks that they've been building up their money. We open a little library store. We have books they can buy and um, some other little items and, and things that we collect throughout the year. And um, it's great. It's been a very good incentive, and they really seem to enjoy it. Um, and summer is just a crazy time at the library. It's so busy, which is wonderful. It, it's so great to see these kids coming in and wanting to read. And it's so important for them because the schools have told us and all the literature has told us that to practice reading over the summer, you don't lose your skills. The mm -hmm. more that you read, the better, uh, better reader you will be. And um, I think we have a great collection to be able to offer and if something if a particular book that the children want is out we can get it now from another library with interlibrary loans so it works great we do a lot of interlibrary loan well I know I've uh, taken advantage of that interlibrary loan myself when I've asked for things and I see when the book comes in it's from a different library mm -hmm. so that's a wonderful thing but I like that idea of the library dollars maybe we should try that for some adults who don't <laughs> like to read so much <laughs> well one of, one of the children said last year um, you know, is this real money? I said, no, because if I'd printing it, I, they would have me in prison. Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, it's just for the Hopkinton Library. Well, that's an excellent idea, though. So you, you referenced that the summertime is very busy, though, so vacations and things don't get in the way so much. Or... No. Um, you know, the, because children, if they're going on vacation, they often like to take um, a book with them or several books with them or an audio book which we encourage especially if it's going to be a car trip because mm -hmm. it's we have wonderful audio books that's, that are great for the entire family to listen to I love listening to audio books I don't know if you do um, I, I long really, car trips yes <laughs> well, I, I listen all the time and it helps me keep up with reading some of the books that, that I've bought for the library but um, I really feel lost in the car now without having a book. Even you know, on my 15-minute drive to work every day, I listen to part of it, and it just kind of, I don't know, just gets me going. I don't. With so many of the programs and things that you offer, how do you handle all of that? Do you get volunteers that come in and help? Um, well, I have. First of all, I have some other staff members who help me out in the children's room who are awesome. I couldn't do it without them, and we have, um, especially in the summertime. But we do have some after-school ones, too. But some of the teens in town come and volunteer, and they are just fabulous. Um, they have been doing this for the last, 
I mean, seven, seven and a half years since I've been there, we've had them, and we would be really up a creek without them. They're, they're so fabulous. They will do anything. They help us put books away, which is huge in the summer because the, mm -hmm. the volume is in, increases dramatically. They'll help prep for crafts. Um, when we have some programs, they help out. Like, we're going to do a craft program this afternoon. Um, and if one of my volunteers is there, they'll help the children with the crafts. Uh, we had a great program last um, week. Our, our kickoff was Belle from Beauty and the Beast came to the library. Oh. And <laughs> she was from Enter Stage Left, and she was fabulous. She did a wonderful job. But I had girls helping, you know, organize and getting, because we had crafts for the children to do while they were waiting for um, to, to meet Belle. And as I said, the, the, the teenagers have responded very well, and we've had some really great ones. And the nice thing is a lot of them come back year after year. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do you have, are there, you do so much there. Is there an area that's your favorite? Do you like the reading? Do you like the programs? Oh, it, 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 it's hard. I mean, I love doing story time. I love sharing stories with the children and reading to them. Um, I love. I especially love the picture books. I mean, picture books are the, the most fun, and they tease me because when I get a new order of books in, it's, I'm like, it's like Christmas. I just, it's just so much fun to get them and read them and be able to recommend them. Um, but I think my favorite thing to do with the um, patrons who come in is they come in and they're looking for a book and they have no idea what they want. And, you know, I'll say to them, well, tell me something that you've read that you've enjoyed, that you've liked, or you've loved. And they'll tell me something. And we try to find something not exactly the same, but that might pique their interest some more. And um, it's so much fun to recommend books to kids. And when the kids come back and say, this was the greatest book. I love this. Do you have another one? And that just makes my day. So that might uh, be a way that the, they get involved in the series. You said there are a number of, of new series that, are, that have been out and are coming out. So if they like one of the books, they start with it, they might go through the whole series? Yes. And it, it's funny because there obviously are series like Harry Potter that are complete. Mm -hmm. um, when that first came out, most of us had to wait for the books to come over a number of years. And um, so some of the kids are you know, now like, they start a new series and the next book isn't coming out for so many months and they're oh. like I said well you know patience but I said let's find something else that you can read while you're waiting. Mm -hmm. I, I know like I said it's been a number of years but my son was really crazy about the science fiction series and I'm embarrassed to say I can't remember the name of it but there were like I don't know a hundred of them they were you know for that seven or eight your yes. old age group and he, I think he read all of them he just went through one yeah, well, right after the I other mean, we have things like, you know, Nancy Drew. I mean, Nancy yeah, Drew, course. Hardy Boys are How still popular. How long have those been around? <laughs> right, but they're still popular. Somebody actually came and took a bunch of Hardy Boys out today. Um, you know, they were, I think, the original series that I remember reading one after the other when mm -hmm. I was little. Um, but s series, there are, there are numbers of good series out there um, and for different age groups. And that's, I think, great because it pulls some of the kids in and if they love it they just want to keep going. Mm -hmm. And what about the parents? Do you get much suggestions from the parents on things to do or um, books or how do they get involved? The parents um, will come in and, and ask about different things. They'll ask about different books. Um, I get some of the children coming in sometimes telling me they read a book that they really liked and I don't have it. They th really think I should get it because the other kids will mm -hmm. like it. And most of the time, I do um, get it. We're, we are constrained with a little bit of space, because oh, yeah. there are some series I would love to have more of, um, but I don't have the space right now, but that's going to change. Yes, we're all looking it, forward to that yes, expansion. Yes, we, we're very excited about it. Um, but yes, I, I take uh, ideas from parents. Some parents have um, suggested or told me about a program that they've seen at another library, and mm -hmm. we, we try to accommodate as best we can. Um, there are certain ones that, um, you know, I mean, one of my favorite things is, is I started um, when I came as some book groups. And I started with a fourth and fifth group, grade group. Um, 
and the original group, then they graduated to middle school and then to high school. And two of my um, girls who were with me from the time that I came here eight and a half years ago just graduated from high school this year. And I'm going to miss them desperately, but they were with me with book groups through the whole time. Um, and it, it's a fun thing to do to introduce them to a new book. I, I usually try to p pick something that's maybe a little off their radar mm -hmm. and they discover, or a new author that to discover, and um, that's been kind of fun. And most of the time, I, I, they, I, what I pick is they like, and every once in a while they give me the thumbs down, but that's oh. okay, because everybody likes something different. That's why we have so many. Yeah. Now, Youth Services covers all ages from the younger all the way through teens, and I know that you're looking forward to being able to offer maybe something to the older children and the, the teens when there's a little more space. We've, we've done a few programs that have been successful, um, but it, it's very hard because there isn't a, a space for teens, which will be remedied in the new library. There will be a young adult room, and it will be much easier to offer, um, you know, maybe weekly or monthly things um, to have gaming and a lot of the things that they're looking for that we just don't have the space to offer right now. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. And, um, you know, I've said to some of the children who come in who are, you know, I said, in a couple of years, and it's going to be ready for you, um, we're going to have this, which will be really, you know, I've, I've been to so many other libraries that have it, and it, it's so exciting to see. Yeah, and you see what they offer, and you want so much to yeah. jump in there and do that. For Even for the team. children, too, it will be great because we'll have a dedicated room in the children's room, which I like to call the activity room, so we can use it for story times, but we can have a Lego club. We can have a chess group. We'll have places to do it, places to store the materials, which um, I think will be really exciting. And that's something p parents have asked for. Um, we're going to do one thing, actually, um, starting, we're going to try it twice in July. We did a dry run um, a few weeks ago to have a service dog come for the children to read to it. This popular in a lot of other libraries. And mm -hmm. again, we didn't really have the space, but an opportunity presented itself. I said, well, let's just try it this summer. and. Um, as I said, we did a, an experiment with it, and we had a few kids come in. And what the children can do is that they can come in and read to Gracie. Gracie is a, a service dog who's going to come. And you know, you can practice your reading. Gracie, does, he just sits there and loves listening, um, loves having you give, him, give her a pat, and is non-judgmental. If you stumble over something, she doesn't care. So it, it'll be a great thing. And um, if anybody's interested, uh, I just put the information on the website, and they can contact me about, you know, signing up for a little time slot to mm -hmm. read to Gracie. Now, will you help the uh, children pick out dog stories to read to Gracie? No, they, or? Can, I, they can read anything they want. <laughs> I would say to them, take something that you enjoy or it was something that's your favorite, mm -hmm. and just you know, spend ten or fifteen minutes reading to Gracie. I think that's a wonderful idea. Yes, I, it, it's something I heard about at a. Um, conference a few years ago and I said that'd be great but I just thought you know I don't have a separate room which but we said well we, we thought we'd try it out we're mm -hmm. gonna do it on a Monday evening which usually isn't quite as busy even in the summer and but we'll see and um, a few children who had come in and and tried it out during our trial run had were really anxious to come back and do it again so well, maybe it'll help children also that are a little afraid of dogs yes. when they see how calm she is and they can sit and read a story to a right. to a dog. They might, you know, not be so and, afraid. And hopefully, in the future, this is something we can do on a regular basis. I'm looking forward to it. Now, speaking of uh, books that the children might read to uh, Gracie or anyone else that they want to, are you still accepting donations for the library? Or we are, are you not. Pretty much um, out of space. Our for... friends group um, has asked that nobody donate right now because. We're in the middle of moving to temporary quarters. Um, we're not sure. Um, we, we think we're going to be going sometime at the end of August, beginning of September. Mm. Uh, but the PBC is looking into um, places for us to possibly uh, inhabit for the next year and a half or two while they're building the new addition to the library. So the, the temporary space hasn't been selected it just yet? It has not been selected just okay. yet. Now, do you think that will impact uh, programs during the school year that you normally are able to provide, or you don't um, know at this point? It, it, it may impact some. Um, you know, we're not sure how much space we will have and things, but for example, I spoke to the parents of the um, students in my book groups and said, you know, 
let's plan for October. I'm not sure um, where we're going to be um, and if you can carpool there because a lot of the children walk down from the, yeah, the middle school. Um, I said, or maybe you know we can find a place that I can come and meet you. But I said, it's in flux, but they're all willing to um, wait and see how we can work it out because we don't want we don't want to stop it because it's a it's a great program and I love yeah. doing the book groups so that's got to all be sorted out for mm -hmm. before but we'll, it'll be, it will be sorted out and we will we will manage to do we're, we, we, we think we're going to have to cut back some services but um, until we see where we are and, and how much space we have and whatever we don't know but we you know but we will be there we'll mm -hmm. have books we can get them interlibrary loan will still be working and um, you know, we're still there to offer everything that we've offered before as m much as we possibly can. Well, with you being so busy at the library and helping a lot of our young people love to read, uh, how do you find time for yourself and what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, um, a few years ago, I, when my daughter went off to college and I was totally empty nesting, um, hmm. I decided I always wanted to do something with art. And I went and took a drawing course at Assabet and um, that evolved into um, a painting. So I go to my teacher's house every um, week and along with a number of other students and we paint. So I've, I've been painting. So that's been kind of my um, therapy and time for me. Now what do you like to paint? Do you like to paint still life, animals? Um, usually we're encouraged to take pictures of things. So some some of the things I've done are places I've traveled to and I've found mm -hmm. a picture that um, I've painted to remind me of where I've been and, and things. So it's it's fun. I, I really enjoy it and my teacher is, is a hoot and she's fun and everybody there we've gotten to know each other and um, it's just a, a fun group and everybody's very supportive of each other. So that artistic side of you is really coming out. Maybe that's what helps you when you offer arts and crafts at the yes. library? Yes. Well, I love doing that. And um, Nia Gallagher, who's uh, my partner in crime on that, she helps me a lot because she loves doing it. And um, we um, come up, and it's fun things. There's amazing things you can do with coffee filters and paper plates. There's amazing things you can do with that. And the kids really seem to love it. I was going to say, what are some of the arts and crafts that the kids have done? Um, well, today, um, this afternoon, we have a uh, little uh, Fourth of July craft to make a little rocket, looks like a rocket, and um, we're going to do a Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle, Turtle craft. Um, Those things are still around. I remember that they when, are, when my son was yes, young, he liked yes, the Teenage Mutant. Yes, um, they, we're they, talking they, quite a few they years keep, ago. They keep coming back, because uh, my son had them too, and um, doing a craft with that in a couple, uh, next week, I think, and um, a few other things going on. Um, to go along with some of our our hero um, theme this this year, but we've done things, all kinds of things with um, uh, paper plates. As I said, you can mm -hmm. do all kinds so of things. So much, yeah. Yes, with wreaths and um, I'm just trying to think of one of the other things. I'm blanking now on That's that. That's right. Some of the holiday stuff, maybe oh, you get yes. involved with. The, you but know. but we do a little craft every every um, week with story time that kind of goes. Oh, along. every week! I didn't realize uh, that. With the story time, just a, something small that we do, and my teen volunteers help me with that because they get things prepped and cut and whatever for that. So while we're looking forward to more space and more programs for our teens in the new library, they're jumping in and helping out with the younger children, which is wonderful. Yeah, and a lot of them really, really enjoy that. And um, it's funny because some of my teens who have worked there for a few years, somebody's coming up and I'm busy and that somebody's looking for a book and they'll just jump in and say, you should read this, I read this, it's great. So um, one or two of them I'm, I'm hoping will maybe follow in, in um, our footsteps and become librarians themselves. Well, I've seen clips on HCAM uh, where you've been re reading stories and how mm -hmm. the children get so involved and are oh, so excited do. and you're showing the pictures and they're just really engaged. Well, that's it. And, and as I said, I, I love the, as much as I love to read, you know, chapter books and stuff, the picture books are just my favorite. And I, I have grandchildren now, so it's, it's so much fun buying the books for them. Yeah. So do you think we've uh, pretty much covered what we can for youth services now and we're waiting for the expansion to offer more or what is there anything uh, that we've left out in our discussion? I don't think so. I said I, as I, I just really encourage um, parents to bring their children to the library and to um, you know if they need help we're always willing to help them find books, pick out books, um, get books on interlibrary loan. 
Um, but it's just so important to keep literacy going, especially during the summer. To, 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 and you know, I encourage a lot of parents who will, will say to me, well, they're reading now. I said, yeah, but still read to them. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a great way to engage with your children and to help them and to show them that you love reading as much as they do and that they're, they're going to want to emulate you, you know, and, and keep reading themselves. Yeah, especially when movies and TV get in the way so much, mm -hmm. you know, to keep them well, reading and engaged in books, whether it be, you know, books they hold or I always tell do them kids do much with e-books these days or is it, they some still of them, like to, some of them do some um, of them they, do? They, they they have Kindles and things well, um, the teens probably but yeah, yeah but some of the younger kids will say oh, well I can down we can download that onto the Kindle and, and read it which is which is fine um, though I did tell my my son and daughter-in-law that I will never read a picture book to my grandchildren on on the Kindle I want the book I yeah it's just the, not the same especially it's not with the, the same younger ones. you want to cuddle up and and, and read but um, there are wonderful things on the Kindle too, and, yeah, and there's a place for it. Yes, I, I love it when I travel because I can take several books with me in one compact um, unit. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's much easier to travel with than a couple of big heavy books. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on the show today. Well, I've we, enjoyed I think it we very much. We covered a lot of the areas. I'm going to read my little closing now, and we'll be all set. All right. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more information about the youth services at the Hopkinton Public Library that's offered by Denise Coffin, please visit the website and located on, that will be located on the screen below. And be sure to check the updates for the library's expansion too. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. I'm Dr. Tom Sullivan. And I'm Dr. Hugh Taylor. From the latest in medical testing to ordering prescriptions, health information technology is changing the way physicians practice medicine and patients receive care. Simply defined, health information technology means using computer hardware and software to securely store, retrieve, and share a patient's medical information. One of the biggest benefits of this technology is the ability to create an electronic health record, or EHR, a digital version of the patient's health information that formerly was stored on paper and in many cases still is. An electronic health record offers faster access to health information and reduces the risk of medical errors, such as potential drug interactions from multiple prescriptions. An EHR also offers the possibility of better and faster communication and secure record sharing among all your health care providers, which results in better coordination of care and often eliminates unnecessary tests and procedures. For more information on how health information technology is improving medical care for patients, visit healthit.gov.